graphs involving um, lines is to determine in the graph what the different um, parts of the graph mean. And today we're going to look at how do we interpret what the slope and the y-intercept for a given graph means. Um, in order to do this, you first of all obviously have to know what slope is, which we worked on on the last few topics, and obviously to what a y-intercept is. So because we've already talked about slope and the steepness of the line um, and the rise over run, let's talk first about y-intercept before we begin to interpret what um, the slope and y-intercept mean for the graph that I have. First off, a y-intercept. Intercept in football, you cross the path of the ball and you catch it instead of the other team. In this case, a y-intercept is where the line or the graph crosses the y-axis or um, crosses the path of the y-axis. The y-axis, if you remember, is the um, part of the graph that's going up and down. And then the x-axis is, the is the part of the graph that goes left to right. In our case, um, we have our graph right here, and it doesn't necessarily cross through the y-axis, but it's where it touches the y-axis. So in our graph, our y-intercept is zero. And um, when you interpret the slope and the y-intercept, you have to pay close attention to what the x-axis and what the y-axis are representing. So on this graph, the x-axis is standing for time in hours. And I have it labeled going um, one hours, two hours, three hours, four hours, and so on. So the x-axis represents how time changes. The y-axis is labeled distance in miles, and it represents how the distance changes. This graph that I have going um, increasing from left to right represents how the distance changes over time. Remember, um, slope is rise over run. So whatever is along the y-axis is always going to go on top. Happens to be distance for this example. Whatever is along the x-axis goes where the run is. In this case, it happens to be time. So for our graph in this problem, the slope is going to represent the distance, how the distance changes compared to how the time changes. And um, if you've done anything with formulas and possibly in science, you know that when you're comparing a distance to a time, you're actually finding the speed. So this graph represents the speed of a car, or the speed, um, I don't know, of a train, um, compared to the amount of time that's passing. So if our y-intercept is zero, that means at um, our y-intercept, actually, you could say zero, zero. A lot of times I'll just refer to the y-intercept as being um, the y-value where it crosses the y-axis, but you can also refer to it as a point. So this means as um, no time has passed, so at the beginning of the situation, the distance traveled is zero miles. So if we were to interpret the y-intercept, we would say um, at zero hours, the distance traveled, or the distance is zero miles. Okay, now the slope, remember, the slope is often referred to as a rate of change. A rate because it's a fraction, rise over run and um, change because the graph represents how something changes. In this case, how distance changes over time. So our rate for this graph, we would have to look at how does the distance change. So as we go up along the um, y-axis, let's say we're starting here at our zero, zero point, and we want to know how it changes as we get to the the next point on the line that's easy to, to, to graph. We have to rise 50 units before we get in line with that next point on the graph. So if I highlight in this in red for you, we're rising 50 units before we get in line with this other point over here. So that would mean that our, um, our rise is 50. And um, then to get in 
over to the next point and get lined up to it, we've only gone one hour or one, s one unit along the graph. So our rate of change is 50 miles in one hour. Now to me, that sounds like a speed. I'm going 50 miles per hour. So to interpret the slope of this line, we would say it's 50 miles per hour. That's the change. That's the rate of change of if it's a vehicle, if it's a train. We don't really know what it is because we don't have a story to back it up. Um, if you notice that if this graph is linear, which means it's a straight line, that rate of change should stay the same between no matter which two points we choose. So let's say we want to start at, sorry, let's say we want to start here and see what it takes to get us to the next point. So we're here, we rise 50, re re we run 1. So the rate of change is still 50 over 1. Let's say we want to start from a point here and go to this point up here. So this time we're rising 50, 100, 150. And we're running 1, 2, 3. So it looks to be that our, um, our slope is different, our rate of change is different. But if we were to reduce this, 150 over 3 is, again, 50 miles per hour. So because our graph is a straight line, it's linear, our rate of change has to remain the same.